Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome to another Satisfactory Tips video. Where today we're going to be talking about load balancing. Which essentially is the method of matching your input rates with your output rates. So for example, say you had 120 iron ore coming in per minute from some miner somewhere. A load balancing system would evenly distribute the iron into smelters at a perfect rate so all of them were always running evenly. And this method has a few pros and cons. Definitely a pro is that it makes your factory run faster. However though, it takes up a lot more space to do something like this. And quite a bit longer to set up. But there are a lot of situations where this is crazy beneficial. So maybe learning about this system can help you out. Okay, so how do you build a load balance system? Well, let me tell you. It's about as easy as leaving a like and subscribing. All you gotta know is your input rate, again from like a miner or something, and the consumption rate of the machine you're putting that input into. So from that bin, we're getting 120 iron ore per minute, and each of these smelters uses 30 per minute. So to load balance something like that out, all you'd have to do is have a splitter split into two 60 lines, and then another splitter take that 60 line and make two 30 lines. Because if we're dividing the resources on a 60 line in half, that means there'll be 30 going to each, right? And that matches the consumption of the smelter here. So we're all good. And also, a good way to know you've balanced things correctly is by checking that input. So you can see it's just dabbling from 3 to 4, 3 to 4, 3 to 4, etc. Well, that's because the input and consumption rate are matched perfectly. And now that we know this is all load balanced properly, we know we're getting a reliable amount of iron into this bin here. Whereas if you didn't load balance, it can be a little bit variable. But again, since it is a reliable 120 per minute, we can just hook this up to another load balance system, see to make some iron plates, and they'll all end up running at the exact same rate as well. However though, those are kind of like the one, two, threes, A, B, C's. But now let's get into like the four, five, and sixes here, with something a little bit more complicated. Those tasty, tasty, heavy modular frames. Everybody's favorite thing to make. And things honestly aren't that bad. It's just you start dealing with weird numbers like 24 per minute or 12 per minute. And it's like, what's going on, eh? And at this point, you kind of need to put some logic into your load balancing. So for example, we need 10 modular frames per minute, right? And the assemblers for these make four per minute. So we have to have two on 100% and one on 50%. But well, that means load balancing wise, you can't just use a splitter to split everything to all three machines because they have different inputs. So it's kind of at this point, you have to add in a little bit of logic here. So this doesn't work, so goodbye to all of that jazz. And now how do we make it work then? Well, we need this last machine to take half the amount as the other two. So what we can do is we can add on another splitter just before items enter it. And then from this splitter, we have it go back to the main line and enter into a merger. So then half of the uh, sheets that should be going over that way re-enter the main line and get split evenly again. And then the process just repeats. So now because of this splitter, this assembler is getting 50% of the iron plates as the other two, and we're all good. Just keep in mind when you're doing this kind of mechanism, be careful about your line limits. Because if your belts can't handle all of the stuff re-entering the main line, you can run into a few problems. And as you can see here now, the reinforced iron plates are balanced out properly. Although for some machines, it's not going to be absolutely perfect, but kind of stays in like a range. Like with this one, where you're seeing it's going from 10 to 14-ish because sometimes the production before that is a little weird too. Like the reinforced iron plates that we're making are 7.5 per minute. But for some other things, things are a little bit more spicy. So for example, we need 72 steel pipes per minute. So we have one, two, three, four, five constructors making steel pipes, and then one of them is just on 80%. So what you could do is have a more complicated version of this refeeder mechanism here, so everything load balances properly, where instead of splitting things 50-50, you have it 80-20, and I have some links in the description on how to do that exactly. However though, being honest with you here, 
Like, you don't really need to worry about one constructor being a little inefficient. Like, maybe at that point in time, you just want to use the overflow method, where you just have everything go into one splitter and split to the next, to the next, to the next. It's kind of like a time versus investment kind of thing. But now if you're making computers or something real spicy, that's when you want to do the really complicated load balancing. And again, I have some of those complicated examples in the description below. Anyway though, I just have one last quick thing to show you here, and that is a load balancer. So load balancing is trying to match your inputs with your outputs from one machine to another. But then a load balancer, something like this here, will balance out all of your inputs so they're ready to go into the output machine. So for example, this is really handy with trains, where you're mining like iron from a bunch of different sources. Say you have one pure, one pure node, and then one normal node. Well that normal node, you're gonna have a problem with that if you wanna bring it to the same place as the other two. But luckily, you can just build a load balancer like this, and at the end of the process, you're going to have three equal lines. So this example I actually set up, I actually used in my Let's Play world, where I had a train bring in two pure bauxite nodes, and then one normal node. So it was 780, 780, and then 600. But luckily this system evened it all out, and now each of these bins is receiving the same amount of material. And thankfully, there are plenty of diagrams online about how to build these for yourself, and there's a variety of different types, like five lines into two perfect lines, or like three lines into six lines, etc, etc. Uh, again, link in the description. Highly recommend you check this out. It is critical for when you get into trains and big trucking projects. Anyway though, that's pretty much all for today. And just to be clear, I'm not saying the load balancing method is what you should use for everything. Again, it depends on context. And it's more so just another tool in your toolkit. Anyway though, I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching. If you have any suggestions on what kind of tips videos you'd like to see next, let me know in the comments below. But anyway, have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye